Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to go over a lot of information about the ConocoPhillips company. So I hope I can provide you with a very good idea to what to expect from this company moving forward and also I want to see what this company has been doing right from the past that ultimately can be replied in the future and repeated once this whole crisis is gone. So I want to start by saying that I really like the balance sheet of the company and with that I think the management team has been doing quite a fantastic job at least from the past five years and also as a potential investor you have to consider that this industry is very volatile so the profitability of the company and actually the success of the whole business depends pretty much on the market price of crude oil natural gas and all the underlying commodities where the business has operations so with that being said let's dip right into the video and basically in this video I'm gonna go through these things so first I'm gonna analyze the 2019 financial statements from the company and also the annual report then I'm gonna move on to calculate the fair price of the stock and then I'm gonna analyze the 2020 Q1 results starting off with some basic information you can see that the stock have suffered a huge rally back in March so the low here was $22 but as the overall market has been rising also the the company is now trading at about $42 if we scroll down here in if we look at this chart from Yahoo Finance you can see the trends both from revenue and from earnings and right off the bat you can see that Conoco struggled a lot between 2015 all the way to the uh, beginning of 2018 with no profitability at all and honestly if we look at the reason behind it the losses was pretty much due to impairments and guys for those of you who don't know what impairment is an impairment is basically a decrease in value of certain assets without previous expectation of that so a permanent loss in the, that asset value and also we can see that after that spike in revenue and also in earnings through that period the revenue came back down during the 2019 fiscal year and again if we look at the reason behind it the decrease was due to the disposition of two facilities in the UK so now the company no longer operates in the United Kingdom and the main reason I that I like this company so much that as I said before is because of the strength of the balance sheet by no means Conoco has one of the best balance sheets in this sector and it has a lot of liquidity which is very very crucial during these times mm -hmm. but before I dive in into the numbers of the 2020 Q1 results I want to show you guys how the company was positioned at the end of 2019 so as you guys probably know Conoco Phillips operates with four main commodities crude oil natural gas natural gas liquid and bitumen and what I want to point out here is the balance sheet. I'm just going to focus on the current balance sheet, which is basically the balance sheet that the company has within a year. So all the assets that the company can liquidate within a year and all the liabilities and the debt the company owes within a year. So basically you can see that the company had at the end of 2019 10 billion dollars in cash of that cash 5 billion was in cash in cash equivalents and other short-term investments was about 5 billion dollars they also have net receivables of about 3.4 and inventory 1 billion dollars which led them to current assets of about 17 billion dollars now if we take a look at the liabilities we can see the current liabilities being seven billion dollars of that current debt was 105 million dollars accounts payable 3.2 billion dollars and accurate liabilities another two billion dollars so as you can see at the end of 2019 the company had the enough cash to cover all the current liabilities which is insane and pretty pretty good and also obviously the current assets as a bigger number was fairly comfortable to handle these liabilities if this whole crisis does not last too longer I think the company is in a position where it can actually uh, weather the storm so now if we take a look at the cash flow statements and remember I'm just cracking the 2019 numbers I'm just gonna be telling you the bigger numbers guys 
do not extend the video too much. So we can see that the net cash provided by operating activities was $11 billion. This is the most important number here because this is the cash that the company gets after paying all its operating activities. And as you can see, the company had $11 billion, which was a pretty good margin, about 22%. All the other competitors were making 6-7% and the company made 22 so big advantage. But also the net cash used for investing activities was about $6 billion and the net cash used for financing activities was about $5 billion. So all in all we can see that the free cash flow was about $4.5 billion and actually this is a very good number because it's close to the earnings number. This means that the company is not spending too much money to stay in business. And also the free cash flow means that the company has money to invest in scaling the production and actually becoming even more profitable uh, rather than just staying in business and not losing money. Now I want to point out here guys and what I want to say is that basically if we take a look at the average pr production cost per barrel of oil equivalent that Conoco has we can see that averaging these numbers I'm just going to cover the crude oil because it's the main business but you also can see in natural gas natural gas liquids and bitumen the average cost per barrel that applies to Conoco production cost is about ten dollars per barrel so this means that if the crude oil continues to be in a low price the company is not able to make a profit also if you look at the average price of oil we can see that averaging these numbers would be pretty much about 50 and actually if we look at the just past five years we can see that the oil price was above $50 and the company was making a profit of that and now the oil is very very low so as long as the oil continues to be in this price range all the oil industries are just going to have losses and it's undeniable but if you have a long-term perspective and you believe that the price of oil will rise once this whole crisis disappears I think Conoco might be a good investment and considering the dividend that you're gonna get through your investment time. So now if we take a look at the company's 2019 annual report and actually starting with a more macro perspective on the consolidated financial statements we can see that ConocoPhillips increased its earnings on the Europe and North Africa facilities and also they invested a lot of money in Asia and Middle East. This means that the company's business is going internationally, which dilutes the risk of exposure in the US market, which obviously with this whole crisis stands very positive. But I'm actually going to talk about that later on in the video, so yeah. However, the main source of revenue still comes from the lower 48 in the US. And right here, you can see that Canada is the country that brings the less amount of money. And if we look down here, where it shows the profit margins, every market that Conoco has businesses, we can see that lower 48 has the worst profit margin, which means that the profits of the company in this particular area are less than any other area for the same amount of revenue. So if the company scales their production and scales their exposure to other markets in the other facilities outside of lower 48, they are actually going to have better profit margins, which at the end of the day brings more money to the company and that's very good. So at the moment half of the revenue comes from the US and the other half from the rest of the world. Also we can see that Conoco has maintained its assets on a flat trend at least until the end of 2019. ConocoPhillips main business is by far crude oil followed by natural gas and the company also increased the number of barrels it has for reserves which if we look at today's situation it means that as long as the lack of demand for crude oil continues this company is not going to be able to sell and get ripped out of these barrels and that's why they now are taking severe measures which I am also going to be talking about later on in the video I just want to give you some more insight so you can have a clear idea of the business most operations and how they were performing before the global crisis Therefore, we can predict where they're gonna be in the long run because chances are, if the company continues to be healthy, they will probably be going to repeat the things they've been doing right in the past. And of course, as the 2018 and 2019 were pretty much the Conoco's best years, so clearly that strategy was showing results. 
So with that in mind, I really think that once this whole chaos disappears, they will be going to or at least try to restart their operations and plans before crisis. But also you have to consider the volatility of the market, as I said in the beginning of the video. If we scroll down here, we can see a spike in proved and developed reserves costs to about $5 billion. These are reserves that are expected to be developed within 5 years. And with that said, this is pretty much what I wanted to show you from the annual report. Now let's find out the fair stock price for this company. And for that I'm gonna use the discount free cash flow method. If you don't know how to calculate the stock price using this method, I highly recommend you guys to find out because this is a pretty good method to use. So there is plenty of videos on YouTube that explain that. But basically you just want to use this method when the company has three things. First is when the company does not pay any dividends or the dividends are well below what the company is capable of, which I think might be the case of Conoco if this whole situation doesn't last too longer and the price of oil comes back up. Also the profitability has to align with the free cash flow, which in this case you have really good numbers. And third, you gotta stay conservative because you don't want to put inputs that don't match with the reality. So guys, if we take a look at the calculation, and I have to say that I'm not going to cover this part here because this uh, basically makes part of the calculation and I'm not going to explain the calculation in this video. This, I think this is not the proper video to do that. This video is just to show you a little bit of the Conoco business and some information about it. But basically what you have to to know about this is basically that the yellow spaces are the ones that you need to fill so these are the spaces that I fill with my assumptions excluding obviously these numbers because I just copy from the financial statements and if we take a look at these numbers what this means is just this is the year-over-year -year growth of revenue and if we make the average of these three numbers here which would be the, the theoretical number that you would put basically saying that the business is going to grow at this rate for the next four years and it would be really accurate because you are taking the average of the past and assuming for the future but because of the overall situation I think the company is going to suffer quite a big hit as I said in, uh, in, the, in this video for so I'm assuming that the business is going to decrease about 47% on the revenue then they are going to recover about 18% and they are and then they are going to steadily grow about a rate of 9% and I also I input really low margins because if we take a look at the past the net income margins were about 20% and I am saying that the company is going to make 3%, 5%, 7 and 10 and I really hope I'm not wrong guys because I think they can be making really negative numbers as they did in, in these years. Then I get the free cash flow numbers with using this percentage which is basically the average of these two so aligned with the profitability of the business. So I copy these numbers here and then I discounted the required return. I'm not going to look too deep into this, but yeah. And then I get the fair value of equity. And I have to say that this is a very, very conservative valuation of the business. I really can see the fair value of equity being around $30, guys. Take that in consideration. I'm being too much conservative in my point of view. But then you decide the margin of safety that you want to get. So yeah, that's what I have to say.